Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about how is DNA packed into the chromosome. And this compression of DNA involves the formation of nucleosome, chromatin, and then eventually chromosome. So before we talked about in more detail, we first need to understand the importance of packaging of DNA into the chromosome. So first thing, Chromosome is highly compact form of DNA that readily fits inside the nucleus of the cell. It is very difficult to understand that the amount of genetic material we have and how efficiently that can be fit inside the nucleus of the cells and then when needed it can be easily accessible for replication, transcription and recombination. So it is, it is important to understand that. And next Chromosomal DNA is extremely stable and serves to protect DNA from damage from nuclease enzyme. And it also allows efficient transmission of DNA to the daughter cells uh, during cell division. And it also confers an oral organization of each molecule of DNA. So now let's talk about how this DNA is packed into the uh, chromosome. So the compression of DNA is initiated by formation of nucleosome. So let's, let's see how this nucleosome is formed. So for nucleosome, suppose we have a naked DNA here and this naked DNA is tightly bound to basic proteins and these proteins are called histone proteins. So therefore, this complex of this DNA and this histone proteins, this forms the nucleosome. Now let's a little bit in more detail about these histone proteins. So there are basically five classes of histone proteins, H1, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. And these histone proteins are positively charged at physiological pH because they, they have a high content of lysine and arginine. And they form this ionic bond with um, negatively charged DNA. So uh, two of these histone molecules uh, such as H2A, H2B, H3 and H4, this forms histone octamer because there are eight histones. So this forms histone octamers and they resemble like a structure which is similar to beads. And, and this histone octamer are basically the, the structural unit of nucleosome core. And surrounding this histone octamer, the DNA molecule is wrapped around and forming a negatively supercoiled helix. So it is important to understand that these histone octamers, they act like beads and then surrounding these beads, the DNA molecules are wrapped around. Now, it is also important to understand that uh, how tightly this histone molecule are bound to DNA. They can be either tightly bound or loosely bound. And, and how tightly this histone molecules are bound to DNA, it is regulated by post-translational modification of DNA, such as acetylation, methylation, and phosphorylation. And therefore, as a result, it can also affect the expression of specific genes. So this is just to understand, which I'm not really, this is just for you to know, but I'm not really going to go into the detail of post-translational modification of histone, or histone uh, proteins. But just to remember that post-translational modification can affect how tightly these histone molecules are bound to DNA and therefore it can also affect the expression of specific genes. Now, so this is the histone octamer which, which resembles like beads. Now, the DNA molecule or D, yeah, the DNA molecule which is surrounded or which is wrapped around these histone octamers, they are called DNA core. Now, these two neighboring nucleosomes, they are joined together by DNA linker. So, so the DNA, uh, so the DNA molecule between these two uh, neighboring nucleosomes, they are called DNA linker, and this DNA linker, um, they are approximately fifty base pair long, and they are also bound to this. Um, 
H1 histone protein. So, so it is important to understand this H1 histone protein bound to DNA linker and meaning that H1 histone protein is not a part of nucleosome core. They bound to DNA linker but they, it is not part of nucleosome core. And by binding to an H1 histone protein by binding to DNA linker, it also facilitates the packaging of nucleosome into the more compact structure. So together, uh, this nucleosome, they kind of resemble like beads on a string. So this is our beads, which is the histone octamers where the, uh, where the DNA uh, surrounding surrounding what the DNA molecules are wrapped around and uh, so these beads are kind of looks like you know they are on the string so they, they resemble like a structure of beads on a string and they are also often referred as 10 nanometer um, of fiber. So now next when these nucleosomes are tightly packed they form this nucleofilament which are also referred as 30 nanometer fiber and current evidence also indicate that this 30 nanometer fiber they eventually form these long uh, DNA loops of variable length and these are called chromatin fibers. So these chromatin fibers when they are loosely packed they are easily accessible and they are called euchromatin. And and they are also um, considered to be transcriptionally active because they are loosely packed, they are transcriptionally active, they transcribe, the, meaning that the DNA is transcribed into RNA. And, and this mostly occurs during the interphase, meaning it occurs during the non-dividing phase of the cell cycle that is G1, G0, S and G2. And when this Chromatin fibers are tightly packed and condensed. They are called as heterochromatin fibers and they are considered to be transcriptionally active, meaning that the DNA is not transcribed into uh, RNA. So there are two types of uh, chromatin, euchromatin, which is loosely packed and easily accessible and transcriptionally active, whereas there is this heterochromatin, which is tightly packed and more condensed and they are transcriptionally inactive and this mostly occur during the interphase of the cell cycle. So together euchromatin is a loose chromatin loop whereas heterochromatin is a tightly chromatin loop. So furthermore when these heterochromatin loops, 18 of these heterochromatin loop when they are arranged radially around the circumference of a single turn they form this mini band unit of the chromosome and eventually this mini band of this chromosome is stacked around the central axis and eventually this stacking of these mini bands forms the chromosome so so it is important to understand that this chromosome is always in the form of heterochromatin. So heterochromatin, so when these heterochromatin loops are arranged um, in a mini band unit of the chromosome and then eventually they are arranged in a stack. So this stacking of mini bands, they are approximately 10 to the power of 6 mini bands forms the stacking of this mini band from the central axis to form the chromosome. Now let's do the recap. So nucleosome. So nucleosomes are a structural unit of DNA and protein. So the length of DNA DNA which is coiled around a core of histone protein and this is a least condensed structure of, of the chromosome. Now chromatin Chromatin is a complex of DNA and protein. It is the same thing. They are all complex of DNA and protein, but but they are nucleosome is a least condensed structure of DNA and protein. However, chromatin 
is is the same complex of dna and protein but it is more condensed structure than nucleosome and chromosome which is the highly condensed chromatin fiber uh, as well as their highly condensed structure now nucleosomes forms the chromatin chromatin forms the chromosome nucleosome is unpaired they are unpaired because they are they are like a as as i mentioned they are beads on a string so they are unpaired structure whereas chromatin is also an unpaired structure because they are arranged in a loop they are easily they are either loosely or tightly packed chromatin fibers so they are not paired however chromosome is a paired structure because there are four arms of chromosome and they are paired now nucleosome is long thin and uncoiled fibers chromatin is also long thin and uncoiled fibers whereas chromosomes are compact thick and ribbon like coiled structure chromatin allows the replication transcription and recombination events that means these events are active uh, in chromatin in in chromatin whereas in chromosome these events are not active that is the replication transcription and recombination these events are inactive because chromatin can either be in u chromatin form or heterochromatin form that means u chromatin which is loosely packed when these events can be active whereas heterochromatin which is tightly formed chromatin fibers Uh, during which these replication transcription and recombination events are inactive now chromosomes are only present in a heterochromatin state because therefore this replication transcription and recombination events are always inactive because they are always in a very tightly condensed uh, heterochromatin structure nucleosomes these are this forms throughout the cell cycle of g1 g0 s and g2 that is the interface of the cell cycle chromatin is also formed throughout the cell cycle uh, that is interface g1 g0 s and g2 chromosomes are formed during metaphase and anaphase that is during the uh, cell division Uh, whereas nucleosome and chromatin these occurs during the non in, in non dividing cells lastly nucleosome occurs as a beads on a string structure sorry nucleosome appears as a be- beads on a string and it is visible under electron microscope whereas uh, chromatin appears as a thread like structure they are loop structure and visible under uh, electron microscope whereas chromosome they are four arm structure and visible under light microscope so thank you so much for watching this guys and if you if you think you learn something from this video please like and share the video and subscribe the channel thanks so much for watching and uh, i'll see you next time